I work at Queen's University. It's the third liberal arts institution I've worked for. I'm going into my sixth admission cycle. Um, I've got kind of an interesting perspective. Because one of the schools I was at was a state school in Virginia. Uh, I've also coached college baseball for three years, so I have a little bit of the athletic um, viewpoint. And I uh, just really enjoy the foundation that you can get with Liberal Arts. So what we're going to do today is talk about some of the common misconceptions and give you guys an idea of what I hear on a regular basis, but really give you some facts and show you how we're going to use Queens as a template and some of the other places I work for to see how the educational approach structures to find out what you guys actually want to do with the rest of your life. So mainly YouTube, but you guys are making the most important decision because you guys are paying for it. So my job is to help out with that. Articles in uh, the media really kind of put liberal arts up against STEM and research-based institutions because it's a common thing like, well, do you want to go liberal arts? You should go STEM and do this, you know. I think it's more so about what the student's really looking for and putting the investment and the opportunity cost in what you want to do with your future. And every school can help. I mean, sometimes a STEM or research-based institution is a great fit for students. And I think my job as an admissions representative is to make sure that I counsel correctly and I've told students over the last few years, hey, I don't, maybe Queens isn't the right place. You're interested in this. I'm going to give somebody a call at this institution because I think it's going to be a good spot for you. So, and while we're doing this, feel free to throw any questions out that you guys have. Um, Where were you before? You said you were, you were going to talk about other places. Oh, yeah. I'm going to mix them in. Uh, okay. I, I am from Baltimore, Maryland, originally. I went to University of Mary Washington in Virginia. I uh, played college baseball there, got into coaching college baseball after I had finished up and graduated. Coached there for two years. Uh, second year I coached and worked in the admissions office. Then I took a position at North Carolina Wesleyan College. So Mary Wash was a state school in Virginia, a liberal arts base. North Carolina Wesleyan was a liberal arts private institution in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. I coached and worked in admissions and recruited in the Northeast there. And then I came to Queens just a little bit over two years ago now. And I uh, put coaching to the side because I felt very strongly about how they do things here. Um, so here are some of the common misconceptions, and I thought this picture was pretty funny. Uh, most people think liberal arts and they think that there is no true application for what you can really do with some of these subjects. I will argue that to the grave, that every subject that a liberal arts institution offers has a career. But the problem is... It may not happen right after your four-year degree. Maybe it's an investment in a master's level. Maybe going on to a doctorate level degree. And I had a couple quotes here that I wanted to read to you guys. Uh, one says, Times of economic stress bring renewed scrutiny of higher education, particularly liberal arts education. Misconceptions and sound bites gain traction, especially if Bill Gates and Steve Jobs never earned degrees. Is college really necessary? Why should taxpayers foot the bill for pointless departments like anthropology? Makes you think, right? <laughs> it's something I hear every day. One of the other things that really got me, Thomas R. Check, who is now president of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, uh, said that roughly 20% of scientists elected into the National Academy of Sciences in uh, the last two years uh, came from liberal arts institutions and liberal arts backgrounds. So it's very interesting to see that a typical STEM field, these people are graduating from liberal arts institutions. So it shows you that it can happen. You don't have to go to the big name places that you see playing football every Friday or Saturday night in the fall. You know, it can happen wherever you choose that's the right fit for you guys. Um, and partly because humanities and the things that are encompassed in liberal arts, uh, this is coming from Thomas Check, uh, humanities are important to the sciences not because they produce more culture of people, but because they produce scientists. Check argues that just as mathematics is considered to be a good exercise for the brain, even for those who will never use calculus in the future, so the study of great books, history, languages, music, and many other non-science fields is likely to hone a scientist's ability to perceive and interpret the natural world. So it just gives you that, yeah, it gives you that strong foundation. It's something that I feel strong about because I'm a product of liberal arts education. Uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about my path and tell you not to follow my path, you two, okay? The, uh, didn't take the wisest route. Um, but I'm going to use primarily Queens as an example of how we approach it to really help find careers for you guys. So what do you guys think about the arts? Anything's popping to your head? Any ideas that you guys had, preconceived notions before you came into that? Come on, throw it out. It's all right. Not really. Okay. Parents, you guys can throw some things out there. You guys are paying for it, so your opinion is very important. 
Very important. I don't know. I didn't go to a little Walmart school, so I don't really know. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. Just anything that comes to mind. Uh, these are the typical things that I hear on a weekly basis at Queens. Uh, is it a plausible investment for my future compared to going to a maybe to a bigger state school, maybe a little bit more affordable, depending on what students qualify for uh, during the financial aid awarding process? Do you know exactly what you want to do with the rest of your life? This is something that I'd love to ask every student because I do not think any student should be forced into a major program when they arrive to college. Uh, it's all about our job finding out what you guys are really interested in. It's great to have an idea, and if that's something that you're passionate about getting in, but a good four-year institution will force you to find out if that's really what you want to do uh, through experiential learning opportunities, some other things that we're going to talk about. And uh, as I threw out there, is education affordable? And some of the things that you guys will see going through the financial and awarding process uh, during your senior year now is that we're seeing on a national scale that private institutions are actually coming out to being very same cost on average for students that enroll to go into most state schools when you count tuition and room and board. At Queens this past year, because being a private institution, we can award as much merit scholarships as we choose. We don't follow the state government guidelines. Average student, after all their merit awards and grants, not counting any subsidized, unsubsidized, or parent plus loans, had a bounce of $15,000 to enroll. And I mean, that typically, if you're going to go to, I remember when I was at Mary Washington, when I left four or five years ago, in state tuition was $24,000. And it just blew my mind because we're going through and evaluating these different admissions files, and I see a student with maybe 2200 on all three sections of the SATs, 4.5 weighted GPA, and they weren't getting any academic awards. It was just, it blew my mind. And it really kind of hit me that it's not our fault, it wasn't the students' fault, it's just that we only had enough money to award with an incoming class of about 1,500 students to probably 10 students we had enough money to actually award merit-based awards. Everything else was being financed out of pocket or through federal aid. Uh, so that was something that always stuck out in my mind because I know even as a college athlete, I still accumulated debt in my experience to get to where I am now. All right, here's some things that I feel liberal arts can do. Taking these different subjects and disciplines, surrounding them around your major interests and things that you want to go into for a career, uh, it tells you about who you are and how you want to live the rest of your life. It gives you that foundation as a person. Most of these courses that you're going to take really, uh, they teach you more outside. And I think uh, one of the things that we'll talk about in a little bit are the core classes at Queens. And I got to listen to a few of our seniors that graduate next weekend at our open house last week. And just hearing them talk about, you know, going into your junior and senior year, most of your courses are in your major program. You're always around your psych majors. You're always around the other business majors or the bio majors. But when you're in a liberal arts program, then you have these other disciplines with your gen ed requirements that you have to take to graduate. So it kind of just diversifies your field. You're hanging out with math majors. You're hanging out with sociology majors. And you're really kind of getting a different look on things and broadening your horizons through these courses. Um, but the whole point of them is to get you guys out of your comfort zone and really teach you that the rest of the world when you get out of college is going to be people contradicting your thoughts. Not everybody's going to share the same opinions, political, religious beliefs, but preparing you to have those debates and be able to work with individuals that feel that way and get the job done. If you go right into the business field after you graduate and you're working on a project with somebody that does not agree with anything outside of work with you and your boss says you got to get it done, you have to figure out a way to work together responsibly, respectfully to get the job done. Same thing with going on to graduate studies when you're doing a group project and your professor wants you to put together a presentation with somebody you may not like because of something they said in class. But when you have a background that teaches you how to work with all these different individuals, teaches you how to communicate co coherently, and it just gives you that true foundation and you're ready when you get out of your four-year degree. So I know I said shouldn't do this, but this slide right here does kind of pit technological studies against liberal arts because that is the most common theme. I'm not a big fan of it, as I said, because I think it's all about what the student wants. But the major difference between us and a, and a research or STEM-based institution and then when students arrive to a liberal arts program or a liberal arts school, we really don't expect you to go into a major program right away. You don't even have to go into it right in your sophomore year. The whole goal is to take general education courses, go through first year experience programs. We had that at my first school I worked at. It was a great transition program for students. 
core classes, which we'll go over in a little bit. Experiential learning opportunities, these can be internships, working on or off campus, kind of see if what you think you want to do with the rest of your life is really what you want to do. You know, these type of experiences really kind of just broaden your eyes and say, you know, maybe I was thinking psych coming out of high school, and you know, after that psych class, I really didn't like that at all. You know, <laughs> I had an experience, and I'll wait till I get to the slide that I really like to tell you guys about how I ended up where I am, but even core and gen ed classes can tell you a complete different look on a program. You know, you may watch the movie and say, man, that looked really cool, and that guy was working in a marketing firm at a big time business bank, one day you take marketing when you get to Queens or Mary Wash, and you're like, this is not fun. Now, maybe this isn't what I want to do the rest of my life, but that's a good thing. Find that out early on and don't go into that program right away. Get a major in something that you're not going to want to do the rest of your life. Right? Parents, you don't want to waste money on that, right? Yeah. Here's some of the benefits. Typical liberal arts universities or programs, you're going to have small class sizes. Majority of them are discussion based. Uh, one of the things I love about our campus is we set up every single classroom into almost a mini pavilion. So you can only see 25 to 30 students in a class. Average class size right around 12 to 1. But we do that so that we're right on top of the professors and the professors spend the whole class throwing out questions, asking students opinions, and really making sure that you guys are learning. And that's the whole point because they're there to teach at all these institutions and programs. They don't want to, if their program is not the most popular at an institution or as I said with anthropology and that quote, I think an anthropology professor probably wants to really prove people wrong and make sure that their students know what they're doing, have a passion for what they're doing, come out prepared to go into that field in grad school and maybe on to a doctorate degree.